Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to AEL. Now if you're new to this channel please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Cheers. Today I want to look at basically building a headphone amplifier from scratch using an op amp. Now this circuit isn't new, it's been done thousands of times in the past before. I've basically fleshed this out from my vague memory. Uh, we have an any double five three two here as the op amp. You could use any op amp really. Uh, we've got the input coming in through here with a one k stopper resistor and a twenty two k ground reference resistor into pin three. Uh, pin one drives these two diodes, both one in four one four eights. Sorry if my writing is a little bit uh, small and messy. Which in turn drives these output put pair transistors BD139 and 140 respectively. Now I chose the 139 and 140 because, well, they're rated at one and a half amps of current through the collector to emitter. Um, I did think about BC337 and 327, but I found in the past with those that when they start heating up, uh, the signal starts to lose its strength and it starts to distort. Um, so they're not really that great of a transistor, even though they're rated at 800 MA. But, yeah. At least with the 139 and the 140, you can actually attach them to a heat sink. Um, a small heat sink, like a little TO220 fin style. And that works reasonably well. Um, so this is an emitter follower amplifier and it's got two 10 ohm resistors as degeneration resistors in the emitters before it forms the output. The output is then fed back in through this 22k resistor, 1k and 22 microfarad capacitor to the ground to pin 2. And that's the negative feedback line and that gives us a gain of 23. Now you may be wondering why is the gain so high? Well, it's so that you can drive a a higher impedance load such as 600 ohms for instance not that many people have 600 ohm um, headphones the reason I'm doing this is because that class A amplifier that I built on breadboard before where it worked yes but it wasn't practical because there was like 11 transistors and I did start laying out a PCB for it but when I got to having the second channel on the PCB it was starting to take up quite a fair amount of real estate there um, the board ended up measuring around 120 long by, I think it was 60 high, which is a little bit of a large board just for, a, you know, a headphone amplifier. So I thought, well, let's, let's get back to simplicity and just use an op amp because, well, the op amp definitely has better specs. Um, I believe the NE 5532's total harmonic distortion is around about the 0.01% less than, something like that. Maybe 0.001, I can't remember off the top of my head. But there are better spec op amps out there, and lower noise and lower distortion ones, so you choose whatever op amp you want. Uh, so I'm going to build this up on breadboard, and oh, it runs off plus minus 15 volts by the way. So I'm going to build this up on breadboard, and we're going to start doing some testing. So there it is built up on breadboard there. I do have a 100 nanofarad capacitor on the supply lines, both positive and negative, sitting near the op amp which is pretty much standard practice for op amp circuits that just prevents this from oscillating randomly for no reason i have a 32 ohm load up here to start with but it's not actually connected in circuit yet because what i want to do first is i want to power it up make sure nothing unusual happens and i also want to measure what the dc offset coming out is on the meter so i got my power supply set to roughly plus minus 15 volt or 15 volt per side turn it on well, nothing unusual happened. No unusual current draw. Doesn't appear to be any smoke happening. Just check the output transistors. They seem fine. So I don't think I've got any shorts on the board either. That's great. And measuring the output, we've got around about 3 millivolt DC, something roughly around there. Which is perfectly fine. Um, and that's what you mainly will get with a any double five three two. Uh, is a slight DC offset on the inputs, but that can be basically ignored. So I'll just introduce the load now, by putting that back to ground. And our offset voltage didn't change at all, so 
uh, loaded and unloaded and we've got about 3 millivolt DC offset there which is yeah okay it's fine so now I guess I can disconnect the multimeter from the output of the circuit and I can make sure that that's plugged all the way in the board and I can reconnect my scope probe to the output now we've got 32 ohms there so I need to get set up with the oscillator and oscilloscope uh, wait for it to finish doing that okay and we do have an output on the scope uh, the top trace the yellow one is the output and the bottom one is the input so currently we've got 46 millivolts going in RMS and 978 millivolts coming out RMS which is perfectly fine so let me increase the amplitude see how far this thing will go I have to readjust the scope excuse my arm and there's clipping there it does clip asymmetrically which is well okay so I'll back that off till it's out of clipping which is about there so we've got about 2.82 volt RMS coming out with 135 millivolt going in and uh, those transistors are starting to slightly warm up, but they're not, you know, super hot. So, so far, you could probably get away without heat sinking, because at the current output voltage we've got, which is 2.82 millivolt, 2.82 uh, volt RMS, that's quite significantly high in volume. So we're looking at 248 milliwatts, roughly, uh, which is pretty significant. So for the next test, I've got a 10 ohm and a 56 ohm resistor in series with each other. Yes, they're um, different wattage packages, but that makes 66 ohm. It's kind of difficult making 64 exactly, as I said in a previous video, but yeah, it, it's good enough for a basic measurement. So I'll turn the supply back on and increase the oscillator. Yes, we have an output signal. Okay, so at 66 ohms, and I'm going to call it 64, we've got 4.25 volt RMS roughly coming out and 198 millivolt going in. And that seems fine. And that's slightly more power at 282 milliwatts. Okay. Got a lonely 120 ohm resistor in there, half watt jobby. For the amount of power this thing puts out, it should be perfectly fine. Right. Okay, got an output, good. Right, there's clipping. A little bit more voltage, 5.78 volt RMS, which is actually a little less power than 64 at 278 milliwatts. So I've got a 33 ohm and a 560 ohm in series now as the load. That gives me roughly 593 ohms, close to 600. Okay, turn the supply back on. Yes, we have an output. Okay, there's clipping. Out of clipping. 8.75 volt RMS and those transistors seem fine driving that load and significantly less at 127 milliwatts um, so it looks like 600 uh, ohm is pretty hard to drive and we'll notice that the input voltage is slightly higher than the last one so it takes a little bit more input drive to get that output so that's something else to consider. So the input sensitivity changes with load as well. Interesting that we're getting close to 25 volt peak to peak there, which means it's coming pretty close to its supplier hours, um, which is not bad. Uh, we're only losing about five volts, so two and a half volts per side. We might have different results with a rail to rail op amp, but um, 
those transistors are perfectly fine. So this little uh, experiment is what I'm going to call it, works just fine. And my load resistors are not burning up or getting hot, so that's good. So that's our output results. Um, we started to get an increase in power output at 64 ohms, but then it started to decrease at 120 when we ended up with 127 milliwatts versus 248 for 32 at 600 ohm. I should have really recorded what the input sensitivities were for each of these values, but I didn't. Um, yeah, I'll, whilst I'm editing, I'll uh, have a look at what those values are and I'll be inserting it in text captions down below. Uh, so you get a better idea. But what's next for this little amplifier is, well, I don't really need to do a sound test into headphones. What I do need to do, though, is spend the next few hours routing a PCB, getting ready for manufacture. So that's what I'm going to be getting on with next. So about three hours later, I think it is, um, I've got it all routed using double-sided. And it's all through hole. Yeah, it could be made smaller using SMD components, but uh, I don't have the tools for that, and I also don't have the patience. Um, I need a good microscope, hot hot air we work station and then yeah you know you can't get BD139 and 140 in uh, SMT anyway but that doesn't really matter so there's the output devices over here on one side output devices over here on the other side and the headphone socket down here in the middle of the bottom of the PCB there's two mounting holes here for screws but they would be used to mount little right angle brackets too so it can be mounted to the inside of the front panel as it's bolted to it so you're not you know just stressing this socket by using the nut that the socket comes with alone to hold the PCB there's another screw hole up here and um, I've got stars next to all of these output transistors and up here a bit of text saying small heatsink because it would be advisable to have those on a heatsink, even though through testing it doesn't get that hot. If we were driving it at 8 ohm load, yeah, it probably would get significantly hot. So, and there are still some 8 ohm headphones out there. And so there's the 3D rendering view of it. It's quite nice looking with my blue solder mask. See the text there saying small heatsink. Just makes it obvious. It also has facilities for the right power amp output and the left power amp outputs. So as the inputs come in here from a preamp, say, well, they're switched through the DBDT switching of this particular socket, so that when the headphones are inserted, these outputs, which normally would be connected to these inputs up here, are actually disconnected. So that the power amp's inputs are disconnected uh, from the preamp, and the signals just going through the headphone amplifier. Yes, it's not muting the speakers directly, um, so if it's a fairly noisy power amplifier, once um, the preamp is removed, uh, you'll still hear all that noise through the speakers. So it, it's just a way of doing it. It's probably not the best way of doing it, but it's a way of doing it. So we've got the DC in here, DC out, that is just a, basically a pass-through, so you could run this off the amplifier's main supply routes, whatever they are, like plus minus 40 volt, plus minus 50 volt, whatever it is, as long as it doesn't exceed the um, voltage rating of these 200 microfarad capacitors here at 63 volt each. And it goes through a shunt regulator with a Zeno diode for each of the uh, positive and negative sides to give us the positive minus 15 volts to the op amp and the output devices. So that's going to be uh, manufactured soon, not in this video though. There's the bottom because we like bottoms on this channel. Well, at least I like bottoms, I don't know about anyone else, especially on, uh, never mind. Uh, yeah, um, I mean titties are nice too, but so Back to uh, talking about electronics. This is uh, what I've been working on for the past four or five days now. I think it is. 
uh, started this about Wednesday, it's now Monday. So, yeah, I think this is going to work out perfect. The gain may be a little bit too high when running off of a preamp, that will have to be tested. Um, and there should really be a volume control in line with the input so you don't blow your fucking ears off when you plug in the headphones if you're wearing them. Which is a word of advice. You should never plug headphones into a headphone socket whilst wearing the headphones. Bad idea. Um, so they'll be made up and we explored in a future video. Um, I think I did mention that I wasn't going to bother doing a sound test because I don't see the need to because you won't hear anything anyway but if it looks good on the scope it should sound alright so uh, we're going on the frequency response of the NE5532 anyway and that's a, a good range from 20 Hertz to 22 kilohertz anyway so that should be perfectly fine so I might end this video here and if you enjoyed it please go down below like comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already and as always this is the Astro 30 saying see ya have a great day